I don't want to do any more experiences on Groupon. I just, I don't. And I've been single for eight years. Um, any single moms in the crowd? Any single moms? What, they're at home raising their kids? Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's up, you want to go out later? You want to hit Walmart? What's up, where are you going, Marietta? I don't want to meet a man at Walmart, uh-uh. Because if we're both shopping at Walmart, we're not financially compatible. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, really. Thor knows this. I married a comedian for love the first time, and that was really stupid, okay? That was really stupid. And the next time, I'm looking for old money is what's happening. I really, and I really, I don't support divorce. I really don't. Um, I, uh, I might, you know, it's just hard, like when you marry a comedian with no car, and then you have two kids, and then their dental plan is chew on the other side. And then it's just like, <laughs> and he's in Sacramento right now at my house, but ah. Uh, <laughs> But no, we're, we're really good friends, and I'd really like to talk to you more about it, but the judge said I can't. So, because um, he got half the punchlines. But, uh, but no, I, you know, I, I've been single eight years, and the pandemic was a time when people are talking about romance, and I don't want you to worry about me, because I do have a man in my life, and I really do, and even though I moved, I think we're gonna make it work. He's, he's amazing. We've, he's been in my life for three years, and he's a dentist, you guys. I know, and he's so handsome. And I see him every six months, and he's so, he loves me. He sends me postcards every three months, and he's like, come see me, come see me. And we've never kissed, because he's really shy, but he's always trying. Like, he's always like leaning. He's gonna do it one of these days. Maybe it's because I'm crying all the time from the nitrous, but I, I'm just saying, how sad is that? Okay, that's really sad. <laughs> I don't have a love life. I don't have a love life. I'm, I don't know if I can say this joke out loud, but this is, people are like, where do you get your material from? And I mean, my 14 year old is like so snarky. She talks like she's 40. Like she's so, and I, she's like, what are you doing today, mom? I was like, I have to go get my mammogram. She goes, well, maybe you'll get a male nurse. And I was like, did you really just say that out loud? <laughs> Is that how you want to meet your new daddy? Like, really? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> then I thought about it. There's probably some clinic in LA with like male models, movie and a mammogram, you know, whatever. <laughs> I know, I joke about everything, but my mom, I give it up for the breast cancer survivors. My mom is a three time breast cancer survivor. <laughs> three times, she's doing great. I had the joy this year of having my first regular mammogram. That's the rite of passage. Everybody probably had one. And, and I had uh, this, uh, you know how now they send you the report on, online? They send you the report. And I did the smart thing. I posted the report on Facebook and I asked for medical advice. Like, what's wrong with me? And that's when I got some Mexican herbs and some whiskey and Jesus. And they're like, you'll be fine. And so... I had to go three times to get this mammogram like done. Three times to get it redone. So the second time, I went on WebMD and I put in my symptoms and that's when I found out I had leprosy, you guys, because <laughs> WebMD and I was pregnant. If you put in your symptoms, WebMD is terrible. So it was Sunday afternoon and I had to go for the third time. And joking aside, I was very scared with my family history. It's nothing to joke about. I have so many friends that have gone through that journey. My, si my sister-in-law was going through it right, you know, right now. It's a very scary journey. And I was praying and I was like, Lord, your will be done. And I'm, I'm totally cleaning my house Sunday afternoon. And I got this shooting pain in my left side, like shooting pain. And it was scratchy and it kind of hurt. And I was like Googling breast pain, you know, and I'm like, Lord, and finally I was like, no, just stop and pray. And I was like, Lord, I cleaned claim my healing right now by the blood of Jesus. And then I realized there was pretzels in my bra, okay? <laughs> I was like, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And that's when I found out I'm a hoarder, but I did not have cancer. <laughs> he healed me right there. It was great. So what's been going on? I was talking to Thor. He's got his movie out. Uh, for the past couple years, I've been doing my dream job. I've been writing movies for the Hallmark Channel. If you guys like the Hallmark Channel, thank you. Thank you. Um, they haven't come out. Like, they're, they're in the queue because one of them got delayed, not because of the pandemic, because Aunt Becky went to prison. And so um, <laughs> we have to have grace. We have to have grace. Are you surprised? No, what happened? Lori Laughlin. Okay, so... <laughs> 
She's back now. It's fine. She's back. But uh, so I know you guys think they're all predictable and you know the ending and you know all the storylines, but my partner Claire and I are trying to make it different. No, I can't tell you too much about my last movie, but do you want to know a little bit about it? Okay. Okay, can't tell you too much, but it's about this girl and she's a lawyer and she lives in Vancouver, but she has to go home to Montana because her grandma's bed and breakfast caught on fire, okay? <laughs> It's totally different, though. She runs into her ex-boyfriend, Joey Lawrence, but we're more diverse now, so we cast Mario Lopez, okay? So I'm not going to tell you the ending, but maybe she's a princess. That's all I'm going to say. It's sci-fi. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. But so I'll tell you some behind-the-scenes gossip. So my mother is mad at me now every time Hallmark makes a movie that she doesn't like because Hallmark has gone in some twisty turny. I don't know if you guys know this a little bit. And so every time I'm like, Mom, I, I can't get my job back. I'm hoping that they'll call me. And they've just, you know, they're more liberal in their storylines. Some people like it. Some people don't. My mother does not. And so what happened was the president of Hallmark left Hallmark, and he went and started a new network called Je uh, Great American Country Network. And he started poaching the stars. So he got Danica McKellar, he got Jesse Metcalf, and then they got Candace Cameron Bure, they got Beyonce to go over to the great American country, yes, so her first Christmas movie, and they're Christian, and they're supporting Christian values, and so my partner and I, yes, so we just pitched a movie, and last week, we signed Jesse Metcalf to star in our new movie, and if you guys know Jesse Metcalf, he was in a Christian TV show called Desperate Housewives, and he was the pool boy, <laughs> do you remember him? Praise Jesus, he's going to heaven. Thank you. <laughs> if we could get Channing Tatum saved, we'd be all good. <laughs> so Jesse Metcalf is so good looking, and I'm doing these like meetings with him, and I can't focus because God used all the good looking jeans on him, you know. And I was like, okay, Jesse, look, there's a snowstorm, but you're going to have to take your shirt off because you're really hot. You've been chopping the wood. <laughs> You got to do it. You got to make it believable. You're hot. You're angry. You know, whatever. And he's like, okay, okay. Uh, so, so pray for that one. I don't know where it's going to end up, but it's called Restoration Summer. And um, it's about this boy, and he's a lawyer, and then the bed and breakfast caught on fire. And so... Um, <laughs> But then the Hallmark Channel called us like a month ago, and this is a really true story, and they said, we want to start making Christian movies. Can you please submit three Christian movies? This is really true, the, the vice president of Hallmark. So we submitted three Christian movies, and the one that they're really interested in is about this big city pastor, and she has to go back to Montana because the church caught on fire. 